In this video, I'm going to quickly cover what is increasing returns to scale. Um, this is for like an intermediate macroeconomics level course. Um, so to answer that, first off, we need to talk about what returns to scale is. Returns to scale refers to how much output changes give a, given a proportional change in all the inputs. So here's a couple examples of production functions. Um, so for example, here's why the level output is equal to this um, these kind of inputs, so A for technology, K for capital, L for labor. Here's another production function that has increasing returns of scale. So the level of output is equal to three times the amount of capital times the amount of labor. So returns to scale is, well, how much does this output change given all the inputs, so K and L in these examples, uh, are all increased by the same amount. So by returns, we're talking about how much does output change, and by scale, given a constant proportional change in all those factors. So another way to deal with it is, um, another way to write these production functions here is uh, this f of, and then all the factors, right? So output is equal to some function of all of those inputs, so capital and labor. So let's do the first example to show that it's increasing returns to scale. So starting with our production function equal to this. So our initial level of output is this amount of output. So let's say we were to uh, increase the inputs by some amount. Let's say we were to double the inputs. We're curious now if this new level of output, is it going to be twice as much the original as the original level? You know, we've doubled the inputs, so is that maybe going to double the output? Or by doubling the inputs, do we get less than doubling the original level? Or do we get more than doubling the original amount? Um, for increasing returns to scale, if by doubling the inputs, we get more than twice as much as that original output, then we say that's return, that's increasing returns to scale. And I'll show you how we prove that with this example. So starting off with this production function, we're going to double the level of capital. So we put a two in front of capital. Then we're gonna double the amount of labor. So we put a two in front of labor. Um, so let's pull out that those twos. So 2k to the 1 half is just 2 to the 1 half, also the square root of 2, uh, times, so in front of labor is 2 to the 0.8, so I'm going to pull that out, so that's 2 raised to the 0.8, times all of this stuff here. You'll note that all of this stuff here, a k to the 1 half, l to the 0.8, is exactly what we had over here. You know, these things are identical. The other thing to note is that that level of production is equal to the initial level of production, so y sub naught. I just did y sub naught and y sub 1 to indicate before and after doubling the inputs. So this right here is just equal to the initial level of output. Okay, so let's simplify this term here. So 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 0.8 um, how we combine those exponents is we just add them together. So 0.5 plus 0 0.8. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.8 is equal to 1.3. So we have 2 raised to the 1.3 times our initial level of output. And, and 2 to the 1.3, what is that? So you got 2 raised to the 1.3 is equal to 2.4622. So that's about 2.4622 times the initial level of output. So given this production function and like the particular form that it's taken, by doubling the inputs, you know, twice capital, twice labor, we've now more than doubled that initial level of output. So this is more than twice that initial level of output. So that is increasing returns of scale. Another way to think about it, which may be confusing to you, but hopefully not, is a given production function like this, right? So on the vertical axis is the amount of production, the x-axis is the amount of labor, and then I guess the z-axis here is the amount of capital. So this tells you how much production given any combination of labor and capital, right? So for example, over here has uh, 10 uh, units of capital and labor. It produces about 
10 units of production. So I'm going to set um, my little Cobb Douglas production function into the increasing returns to scale zone over here. So that's all of these little ways I could parameterize my Cobb Douglas production function. So it's now k raised to the 1. Point, yeah, k raised to the 1.5 times l raised to the 1.4. So at you have to take my word for it, but at this level of production that I'm pointing to right here, that's five labor and five capital, and you can see that produces about maybe 250 units of production. So y equals 250. So let's say we were to double capital and double labor. So at this point over here, we have 10 units of capital and 10 units of labor. You can see output is equal to 1,000 something, so like about 1,200. So if we only had five capital, five labor, we have production of 250. What happens when you double it? You get more than doubling that initial level of production. So it's gone up to all the way to you know 1,200. So that's a huge, that's a increasing returns of scale. So my scale is how much to increase all the, the inputs by. The returns have more than doubled. So we say that's increasing returns of scale. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks and have a good day. I guess I'll end it by just proving that this term right here is uh, increasing returns of scale too. Um, but I'll just show you here and thanks, bye. So that's initial production. Here's going to be new production when I double the inputs. Let's just have a scaling factor in front of it. Pulling out the Z's to the front. And realizing that 3KL is just our initial level of production. And then z squared is definitely greater than z. So we know this is increasing returns to scale. Okay, thanks. Bye.